Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. So having other gods and possessions ahead of his love and devotion to God, his behaviour and lifestyle was in fact a mockery. He was taking the name of the Lord in vain by his behaviour. He was a worshipper of stuff. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. In our last program, we began looking at a conversation which Jesus had with the rich young ruler from Luke 18. It's a point of contention among many Christians to talk about the law. And again, as mentioned last time, the Apostle Paul taught us that the law is holy and good and righteous. So we need to be respectful when we talk about it, not demeaning it or demonizing something that God instituted. So let's pick up this story again from Luke 18. In verse 18, it says, A ruler questioned him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't bear false witness, honor your mother and father. And the ruler said, All these things I've kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, One thing you still lack, sell all that you possess and distribute it to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. So last time we looked at this conversation and noted the five commandments that Jesus picked up on uh, in this uh, list. He basically talked about adultery, murder, theft, bearing false witness, and honoring our parents. But the five things that he didn't mention were the other five of the Ten Commandments. So he didn't mention, you shall have no other gods before me. Don't make any graven images, which is idolatry. Don't take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep that day holy and don't covet. Really interesting stuff. And, of course, the very first ones um, that he mentioned, they're they're, they're physical to a very large degree. I mean, if you're honouring your mother and father, it's how you treat them Mm. and behave and and the others are obvious. Um, This young ruler... Again, we mentioned last time his his position, his title. Um, he was looked up to, respected. He was admired. Um, he was a pillar of the community, and he was a lawkeeper, or so he thought. Mm. For the most part, for what was visible, he yeah. was a lawkeeper. And then, of course, Jesus says there is this great area of lack inside his life, and he he points out clearly by what Jesus says that he's actually not a lawkeeper at all. Mm. Okay, so if we were to look at the commands that Jesus didn't mention, you shall have no other gods before me, number one. All right, well, his wealth was actually his God. It was absolutely Mm. before God. It was the number one priority. So that's that law broken. Then number two, don't make any graven images because that's idolatry. Well, every possession that he owned was an image that held the number one place in his heart. So there he's broken number two. He's actually an idolater. Number three, don't take the name of the Lord in vain. All right, so having other gods and possessions ahead of his love and devotion to God, his behavior and lifestyle was in fact a mockery. He was taking the name of the Lord in vain by his behavior. He was a worshiper of stuff. Mm. So therefore, he was taking the name of the Lord in vain. Rule number three broken. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, it is true. This man kept Shabbat. He did because if he was a rich young ruler and he had religious standing, he must have observed Mm. Shabbat. However, being an idolater, having other gods before him and uh, worshipping his stuff meant the the Sabbath was a joke. Mm. It was literally an outward uh, ritual that he was keeping All the while, he's worshipping his stuff. And then number 10, don't covet. Well, Jesus gave him an opportunity to put God first, to obey every commandment, but his heart coveted his stuff so much that his possessions, uh, possessions, excuse me, were absolutely paramount to him. He goes away heartbroken. And, And he went away sorrowful, as I said. And I read this story and I'm really sad. And I think Jesus was really sad. He said, how hard is it for rich men to come into the kingdom? How hard is it when you've got so much stuff that it takes such priority in your own heart that you you can't see God for all the stuff? You can keep an outward, mm. you know, form of being godly and a, and a law keeper, but 
it, it's kind of worthless. Yeah, that's right. And I guess that's the difference, isn't it, between those the outward you know, manifestations and the inward hard attitudes. You know, we can be you know not committing murder, for example, but if we're coveting something or you know putting something before God, those things that are inward and hidden can be a much bigger challenge for yeah. us. Yeah, and I mean, and here's the question: How many laws do you have to break to qualify to be a lawbreaker? Mm. You only have to break one. That's right. And I can't remember the the scripture right now, but it actually says if you break one, you you're guilty of breaking them yeah, all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of sad. Really. And it's probably important to point out that there's no prohibition against having wealth. Okay, There's nothing wrong with having money at all. In fact, there were plenty of people actually Hmm. who were very close to Jesus, very godly people. Lazarus comes to mind, who were, as I said, very, very wealthy, great godly people. So having there's nothing wrong with having money. Hmm. There's nothing having nothing wrong with having wealth or having possessions. The real issue is if your possessions and your money own you. That's right. Yeah, because Scripture says it uh, It doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says that the love of money mm. is the root of all evil. Which is another one of those heart attitudes, isn't it? Not oh. so much the outward appearance. Jesus was just like genius at just pointing to the condition of a person's heart to rip right to the very core of a person. Mm. Here you've got this, this, for all intents and purposes, this seemingly magnificently successful young man who had the, literally the world at his fingertips doing so great and he goes away crushed because Jesus just flicks this light, this spotlight onto this area of his life and he mm. comes away thinking, here I was thinking I was really hot stuff and I'm, I'm a wretch. Mm. I mean, my hope, I think in this, my hope for this story is that one day we'll actually get to meet this this rich young ruler um, when we step mm. into eternity and that he went away sorrowful but that his heart broke and he longed for God and that he uh, repented and, and actually did come to know his Messiah, yeah, that he actually true. stood face to face with. Yeah. Could you imagine it? Yeah. Uh, but there is something I just want to finish with and this is that the story of the rich young ruler is in Luke chapter 18. Now, all Hebrew letters have a numerical value and the Bible is filled with numbers that are very significant, okay? The ones we know the, the most well-known are the number 40, the number 7, the number 12. Mm-hmm. Yep. We all know those, but the number 18 is actually very significant, all right? In Hebrew, the word chai, you've got to get that little in the back there, <laughs> chai has the numerical value of 18, and the word chai, chai <laughs> means to live, life, thriving. So in the 18th chapter of Luke, Jesus gives advice to a young man looking for the means of gaining eternal life. And he actually walked away sad. Um, Today, uh, can I just say that if you are seeking eternal life, today is the day of salvation. If you want life, if you want real life, eternal life, secure eternal life, it comes only through knowing Jesus Christ who died for your sin In your place, he died, was buried, he rose again after three days, proving that he's God and has the power over sin and redemption is found in him and him alone. We come to him by faith, we repent, confess our sins, and we can know and have salvation. Mm. That's the story of the gospel, the good news, and our Messiah. So true. However, can I just say that because I mentioned the number 18, I just have a caveat there. The chapter numbers and Uh, verses, verse numbers, are not part of the original manuscripts. They were added many centuries later, so they're not part of the inspired scripture. Mm. So I don't want anybody to get really, really excited and make some kind of a fancy doctrine and teaching (laughs) out of this. It is just a coincidence, okay? Um, But it is a bit of a a quirk. It's a curiosity, and it's a bit of an – just emphasizes the point that we're making. Mm. This young man was seeking life, chai, and in chapter 18, which means life, chai, he actually came face to face with the author of life, went away sad. He's hoping and praying that he actually did come to mm. saving faith and know real true life. And it's an encouragement for us today you know, to choose life as well. If we desire eternal life, don't turn away with a hard or a saddened heart, but seek Jesus yeah. uh, because he is 
salvation. He will give us that life that we're looking for. Absolutely. Well, that brings today's program to a close, but a reminder that you can listen back to today's episode and others that you might have missed via our website or your favorite podcast app. Just search Foundations with Mandy and Robbo to find it or go to the website vision.org.au forward slash foundations. We look forward to you joining us again next time as we desire to understand the Jewish cultural, historical and spiritual context of the Word of God on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.